All right. Well, we want to welcome everybody, right, Fern? Yeah, yeah. What episode number is this for our podcast? I believe this is five. Episode five. Five of discontinued, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but um, today's going to be a little bit different, right? I'm pretty excited about this one. I've been pumped up for this one. There's a lot that I want to talk about. But anyways, um, maybe, uh, I don't know, um, uh, we're going to talk about uh, McDonald's, right? Yeah, McDonald's. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it, not only are we talking about just McDonald's as a whole, uh, like what it is. Obviously, I don't think we need to talk about what McDonald's is. I right. think everybody knows right. what it is. But it's also um, a leadership type of uh, a podcast for, about McDonald's, even I think pastoral um you know entrepreneurship yeah. of course but so it's that that type of uh yeah McDonald's. it's def- definitely definitely going to be this is a leadership podcast uh-huh. so i guess we'll say right now if you're not interested in entrepreneurship business leadership um uh pastoral role uh anything then uh this is maybe a little bit boring but it's also going to be really really interesting Mm -hmm. uh by the way but everyone has eaten there Mm -hmm. but not everybody knows how mcdonald's has gotten there yep not everybody knows how they've gotten there but um gotten where where? <laughs> I don't know where. <laughs> to be being oh, okay. the largest food chain in the world. Mm, mm. They're bigger than any other restaurant business that you can think of. I was talking to somebody the other day, uh, and I don't know if you know the answer or not, but okay. uh, what's more dominating? Is it McDonald's or Starbucks? Oh, man, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. The... You know what? I didn't look into that, but mm. I don't know if uh, Starbucks would be considered like a food chain. Yeah. Maybe a brewery That's or something true. like yeah. that. But <laughs> I know they're bigger than I'm Carl's maybe. Jr. I know they're bigger than um, uh, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mm. H- however, a lot of people think that McDonald's was the first fast food mm. chain uh, restaurant in the world. But um, I don't know. Maybe if anybody's out there right now on Facebook and if you want to maybe comment and maybe if you think – uh, you know who actually existed before McDonald's? Hmm. Um, uh, who would that be? Do you want to take a guess? Maybe before uh, McDonald's. Before McDonald's. Put it um. this way. I'll tell you this. McDonald's started in 1938. By the way. Mm. So wow. So think about that. Fast food. Fast food. Yeah. Fast food. And you know what? If you're watching right now on Facebook, that won't be cool. If you're googling and all this other stuff on the side, um, are we getting any? Uh, are we getting any um what? <laughs> uh, like comments or anything on Facebook? Because I can't really see. Somebody said the background is dope. Thank you very much. But anyways, this is McDonald's. So, okay, I'll tell you what it is. East Coast, Aaron Gasolim. Aaron Gasolim is in the back. He's here in the audience. White Castle. Mm. White Castle. Mm. I want to say they were around in 1923 or something like that. That's interesting. I didn't mm-hmm. know that. Yeah, 1923. But when I was a kid, when I was a kid, for a dog, I remember um, the McDonald's here in Oxnard, California on Savers Road. I remember I would see a sign that would say that they had served up already to one million people served. One million people served. Um, can anybody guess how many? To this date, Greg Hilliard, you're back there on the audio mixer. Can you guess how many burgers have McDonald's sold from 1938 till 2020? Take a guess. Anybody? 50 billion. 50 billion. What would you say back there, uh, Aaron Gasolin? What would you say? I'd say like 90 billion. 90 billion. <laughs> <laughs> well, billion? you want to take, you want to take a guess for how many? Like, I'll say seven billion. Seven billion, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> to this day, McDonald's has served two hundred and seventy-eight billion <laughs> hamburgers. Dang. 
278 billion that's hamburgers. A Fern, I know you know the answer to this, okay? How many people are on the planet? Seven billion? Almost well, you're, eight? You're pretty, yeah, you're, you're pretty close. Yeah. 7.5 billion people on the planet. So you know what that means? Hmm. Then that means if there's 7.5 billion people on the planet, that means if we counted every person on this planet, yeah. and let's just say they all went to McDonald's and had a hamburger, uh -huh. which we know not everybody has, but if they did, you know how many times each person in this world went to McDonald's? At least 30 times in their life. Hmm. 30 times in their life. Well, that is pretty crazy. Today we are going to talk about how McDonald's grew from one restaurant to over 38,000 restaurants. Wow. That's a lot. It is. Um, it is. Well, so if you're watching this, we ask you to share. Uh, if it sounds interesting already um, and it's something that you just want to learn more about or you're, you want your friends to know more about, um, share it. You know, we, we have prizes along the way. Uh, speaking of that, our last week, uh, not last week, but our last podcast, there was a winner, uh -huh. um, and that went to Veronica Rocobo. She won the, uh, the contest that we had last week, and that was just the first person to share, you know, that, that was the first person to share. So again, we're doing it today. The first person to share, click share. Uh, you are also going to get a prize. Um, are we going to say, say what the prize is? Um, yeah, we could say what the prize is, but we'll, let's share what Veronica won last last month. What did she win? Uh, last month, she won actually the actual book itself, the actually reading book um, through my windows from Soup the Chemist. Soup the so chemist. she was able to get that. But now it's your turn to share. It's your turn to share. So yeah, let them know what they're going to win if they actually be the first one to share this on Facebook. Share it now. And then also too, last but not least, before we get started, um, again, the series, the episode is about McDonald's, but this podcast itself started and is continued and every episode <clears throat> based off leadership, um, but it goes back to the book, uh, it's called Discontinued, it's authored by, uh, it's authored by my dad, Pastor Fernie Franco, um, it's an awesome book if you, if you haven't read it. Uh, it's a good build build up spiritual book. Um, it shares a story in the first couple of chapters of what happened to this man, and then the last five or six chapters, it's pure just meat to a, a spiritual person of um, yeah. insight of you know of insight of you know positive messages to look for in the Bible, you know people in the bible almost you can say it's like almost like if you're here if you're reading a pastor's sermon you know and that that's what it that's what it sounds like you know that's what it it comes to be but right. um so if you haven't got it uh it's on all it's on amazon it's on barnes and nobles it's even actually i don't know if you want to share about it a little bit but uh -huh. i know they're in some actual stores locally here yeah they're actually shelved right now um uh gosh uh really don't have time they're pretty much uh out in Ventura County area right now. All but right. Uh, let's get on with this uh, podcast here, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so did we miss anything? My uh, bad. No, Let I me mean, see. we're just going to go to a break. I don't know if you want us to do that. Oh, yeah. We are going to go to a break. And so um, you guys stay tuned again. Share it, share it, share it, share it. Okay, get people on here. We're going to get – it's going to get very, very interesting. People are already uh, commenting on here if we yep. knew where the first Mac very first McDonald's – was and to your surprise it's not where you think it was a lot of people think it was in a certain city but uh sorry it wasn't so we'll be right back after this break my bad we'll be right back <laughs> after this break bum, bum. Man, what a commercial. That was huh? actually, an, I don't think I've ever seen a McDonald's commercial like that. You know why? Because it just came out last <laughs> week. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, well, McDonald's, I mean, that's, everybody knows McDonald's. Everybody's eating there. Um, 
I mean, I don't think I know one person who has. I actually maybe, you know. Uh, I mean, there's so many people against McDonald's. There's so many people. I don't think anybody's like an advocate for McDonald's because everybody knows that there's some something you know there's something there that's probably not good for you but <laughs> it's also something there that is there for you when you're sad it's there for you <laughs> when no, i'm just kidding no i remember a quick story real quick do you remember pitsy my friend pitsy yeah, I remember baseball pitsy. Mm-hmm. so at practice we had this little thing he was a pitcher, so if you know about baseball and high school practices, the pitchers always had to go shag the balls, meaning go get the balls that we hit. And so uh, he would get hit. I mean, he would go get the balls, and he would yell. He'll go, Fern! <laughs> and I would look at him, and we had this thing. And if we gave each other these eyes, let me see what camera. Were you this middle one right here or this one over there? That Second one. camera. So stay, leave it right there. If, if He'll say, Fern! And then he'll look at me, and he'll go like this. And then I'll go, I'll go back to him. I'll be like, that look, both of us, that meant we're going to McDonald's after practice. (laughs) And that was for like three years straight. I'll tell you what's crazy. Who would have ever thought 2000 years ago when Jesus was walking through the streets of Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. or let's just say who would have ever thought it's believed that, uh, Noah's Ark supposedly is somewhere i think in turkey Hmm. or just say the tower of babylon Mm -hmm. right was in uh iraq who would have ever thought two thousand years later after Hmm. jesus walked the earth that mcdonald's will be in places like lebanon saudi arabia Mm -hmm. uh turkey israel Mm -hmm. they are actually in bible soil countries hmm. over 101 countries mcdonald's uh are in hmm. and um but just like everything else fernie hmm. everything begins small mm-hmm. everything begins small we look at mcdonald's and it is the largest food chain in the world however it began small just like like apple mm-hmm. apple everybody looks at apple but they don't realize it started in a garage Everybody looks at Disney. Oh, my Lord, how Disney have grown and Pixar and it goes on and on. They don't know it started in the garage or perhaps they do. Even Amazon. Amazon is a beast. They started in a garage as well did Google. But, you know, I, you know to me, I, I'm a firm believer in the scripture that, that, that God told Job where he said, though your beginnings will seem small, so prosperous uh, your future uh, will be. But yes, okay, so let's talk about it. You know, I think a lot of people saw that movie, The Founder. Mm-hmm. Okay, and The Founder, actually, to be honest with you, is, is probably about 95% accurate, uh, accurate on actually the history of uh, McDonald's. However, there is a lot that is left out of that movie mm. because that movie primarily is about the supposedly the founder, which. Um, is known in the movie as Ray Kroc. Mm-hmm. However, that's not the original founder. Hmm. He takes the credit of being the founder. And so therefore, he skipped a lot of the original history from from when McDonald's first started. And this is an, a, a big introduction, by the way, that actually is just going to close out in the last five minutes on what the answer is mm-hmm. on how McDonald's grew mm. from one... Mm -hmm. restaurant to 38,000 restaurants. So we have to talk about the beginnings here. So let's go all the way back to 1930. Hmm. What were you doing in 1930? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. Hey, hey, there, believe it or not, there's people watching right now that were around in 1930, but in 1930, um, there were two brothers. A lot of people don't even realize why it's called McDonald's. It's called McDonald's because that's the last name of the two brothers, Mm. the McDonald brothers. You have Richard McDonald and Maurice McDonald. And so in 1930, excuse me, in 1930, these two brothers, they were fresh out of high school. They moved from the East Coast, New Hampshire. They they, they, uh, moved from New Hampshire 
they had a distant relative who was a police officer. And this police officer worked out here in the Hollywood area. And therefore, he knew a lot of uh, actors. He knew a lot of the Hollywood sets. And so he uh, talked his distant relatives to move on over to Hollywood and he'll be able to get them a job in, uh, in Hollywood sets, moving around, uh, you know, whatever uh, sets and, and delivering equipment and lights and backstage stuff and all of that other stuff. Um, and so so these two guys, uh, uh, Richard, Richard and Maurice, they were brothers. They moved out here to Hollywood. And uh, as they were out here um, in, in 1930, uh, they realized something that um, that American dream that they were thinking was going to happen for them didn't last too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so so they immediately after realizing that, hey, they were going to stay on the bottom of the food chain. As a matter of fact, Richard McDonald says that they would have kept doing the same thing for 15 years in those studios, just moving sets around. So now from uh, 1930 through 1937, hmm. okay, there's like a seven-year different, a seven-year timeline there. They saw a need and they saw an opportunity with the interest in the entertainment industry. And so during those years, what happened is because they were entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and uh, towards the end of this podcast, we're going to talk about how entrepreneurs – Gosh, you know, they're, they they could be great beginners, but horrible finishers. Mm. They come out with a lot of great idea, ideas, but they do not last on actually making those ideas come to pass because they're great big thinkers. And these brothers, that that's what they were. They were great thinkers. And so what happened is they came across this uh, rundown movie theater in uh, Glendale, California. Mm. And the owner of this movie theater actually just couldn't get this theater going on anymore and uh and the mcdonald's brothers found out about it mm -hmm. so the mcdonald's brothers approached the owner of this theater and here's what he told here's what they told him they said you know what? we have no money at all at all but we understand that all you're trying to do is just to get out of this lease yeah and and they said hey just let us assume the lease and if we make money, then we'll pay pay you some money. And this owner was so desperate. He said, just get this lease off of my hand. And so that's what they did. Okay. So four years, uh -huh. they were running this movie theater. Hmm. They did not make one penny. As a matter of fact, you know what? They couldn't even make their monthly rent. You know how much the monthly rent was at that movie theater? Hmm. $100. $100. They couldn't make rent. The McDonald brothers... And so they said, you know what, uh, if there's anything that is making money around this area, it is the food business. Because these were during the Depression years mm. in, 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 our, in our history. And so what happened is one day they were driving, man, and they saw this little hot dog stand that seemed to be like the only booming money-making business uh, in town. And uh, they saw this and they said, man... Uh, that may be a good I idea for us. And uh, they saw this hot dog place, and this hot dog place was called the Doc's Place. Mm. Oh, I thought it was like a, I thought I was thinking like a little, little stand or like, something. Uh, yeah, a cart, you know, those push It carts. was not a cart, man. It was, it was this little tiny restaurant that you see. And, uh, you know, hot dogs and root beer was the biggest attraction mm. uh, uh, for the town. And so you got to understand that, you know, Nobody was making money during this time, but when they passed by the dog's place, they realized, man, this place is making money. Mm -hmm. So they talked to each other and they said, man, why don't, why don't we do something like that? So now seven years goes by, right? They're struggling in the theater, the movie theater mm -hmm. business. Seven years goes by and the McDonald's brothers' desire for, for success was so strong that... They kept looking for business and better um, business opportunities. So they finally struck something that worked. Now, I saw in the comments earlier that somebody said, uh, you know, the first McDonald's was in San Bernardino, California. Well, I'm going to tell that person partially yes and partially no. Mm. I would say yes, because yes, that was the first McDonald's. Mm -hmm. However, but the first food business... 
that the McDonald's brothers ever owned. Believe it or not, they opened up this place and it was called the Big Giant Orange. Mm. <laughs> the Big Giant Orange. <laughs> and you know what, though? They built this small roadside hot dog stand right next to the Santa Anita racetrack in Glendora, California, with just two items on their menu. Two items. You want to guess what they were? You got to guess one of them because Doc's Place was selling it. What was it? Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hot dogs and oranges? Hot dogs and orange juice. Ah, uh, ugh. Well, I know, uh, is exactly right. But you have to understand is that... And you would pour it on the hot dog? No, 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 no. Not that not was just a drink. That uh, was a drink. But orange juice, because uh, in, in the area that they were in, I think Monrovia or uh, Glen, uh, Glendora, wherever this area was, uh, right next to each other, you got to understand that it was, a, it was an orange grove town. Mm. So they just felt, hey... It's an Orange Grove town. As a matter of fact, they would get all their oranges donated for free. They just paid $1 because you got to remember, no oranges were selling. It was a depression. No oranges were selling. Yeah. So they made a deal with Sunkiss Oranges. They mm -hmm. gave them a dollar for 50 cases of oranges. And so they just sold hot dogs and... Uh, and uh, orange juice only. And that was the very beginning of Richard and Maurice McDonald's uh, food stand. Gosh, it's so, so amazing what ended up happening years later. So here's what happened now, Fern. Yeah. So, so we're in 1937 now, right? Uh -huh. So from 1937 through 1940, 1937 through 1940, between those years in Arcadia, California, they wanted uh, uh, a car hop restaurant like everyone else was doing in Southern California. In Southern California, during those times, car hops were like booming in Southern California. Is that where you like eat in your car? You eat in your car, but a car hop, car hop is actually uh, employees. Most of the time, they were attracted, uh, attractive women. Uh-huh. Um, remember, uh, you would see, you'll see like A and W, they will be on roller skates mm -hmm. and they'll go out and take your food to the car. Yeah, yeah. Well, a car hop actually was a person, a car hop. And so, uh, they wanted to open one up in town and they did. And, uh, they opened it up and, um, actually the first, uh, first, uh, um, uh, Car, car hop. hop. The first car hop that they opened up was something that they called the Air Drome. <coughs> the Air Drome. Huh. See, a lot of people think, okay, right away McDonald's started in San Bernardino, California. A lot of people don't even know that San Bernardino, California has history with, with McDonald's. Uh -huh. But the Air Drome, again, what they did is during this time, they took that same uh, menu. They took the same menu, and now they were in an Air Drome, which you see right there. And... You know, they basically just sold hot dogs. <laughs> and they oranges. sold orange juice. And they did add two more items on their menu. They added coffee and tea. No wonder why they had so much difficulty. That's like, I'm thinking about how they couldn't make the rent at the movie theater or something like that. Yeah. Dude, that's a horrible combo. Hot dogs and coffee. Like... <laughs> that's sick bro. That's yeah nasty. but i tell you one thing it 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 was making them more money at, than the movie theater yeah, make you, yeah, shoot. you know so so they did that for a few years but 1940 came now 1940 is where they started to get their big break uh-huh you know that aerodrome that uh i brought up just a little while ago yeah that aerodrome right there okay you know what they did with that aerodrome is they actually split this aerodrome in two and they moved it to the corner of 14th and E Street in San Bernardino, California, and they opened up the very first McDonald's. Mm -hmm. However, it wasn't the McDonald's that you and I mm -hmm. are used to. Believe it or not, yes, Whoever put that call on, on there that McDonald's started in San Bernardino, California, they did. However, it wasn't McDonald's hamburgers. What it was, was McDonald's barbecue. Hmm. 
if you look really, really closely, you can see that sign oh, yeah. there to the left side of the picture. And it says McDonald's Barbecue. Mm. And so now, remember, just from that simple little menu, what was it? A uh, hot, hot dog, dog and orange juice? And coffee. Okay. Now they went from two items, right? And then four items. Mm -hmm. Now all the way up to 25 items mm -hmm. at this McDonald's barbecue, including uh, barbecue ribs, barbecue pork, barbecue beef sandwiches, and they did this, and they actually had a staff of 20 car hops, hmm. 20 women that were out there working at McDonald's barbecue. Is this interesting so far? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going back. We're going back in some history here. So that's why if you're not interested in business and leadership, yeah, and yeah. this is going to be like, I don't want to watch this. I'd rather go watch something else. But this is good if you're into maybe starting something these brothers, they were paying a price. So this McDonald's barbecue fern, it mm -hmm. became the number one teenage hangout in the area. And in this process, it became very pro profitable or pro Pro was that the, uh, mm. profitable? Yeah, profitable. Yeah, profitable. This was <laughs> the spot. Mm. This was the spot, Mr. Gregory Hilliard. This was the spot, and you're going to get a little bit excited because from where you come from, there's some McDonald's history there also. So just wait to hear this, okay? But yeah, so this became the spot for, and so, um, <clears throat> you know, people were just hanging out there left and right. This was a spot for young people that would show up and just hang out and uh, let these uh, car hops come on out and serve them food, and, and uh, however... These brothers, as they started to study the flow charts, the flow charts of is, is of how they're making their money, mm -hmm. uh, Richard, Richard uh, McDonald realized that eighty percent mm -hmm. of all their revenue. Remember, there was twenty five items on the menu. Yep. Well, eighty percent of his sales were coming just from two items on that menu. Mm. Can you guess what they were? Hot dogs and coffee. I'm just no, kidding. no, no. The hamburgers. And the malts, fries, French fries, mm. hamburgers, and French fries. Eighty percent hmm. of twenty-five uh, items on that menu, and so, so they have to go back to the drawing board, and they uh, realize that with the end of World War Two, now it's nineteen forty-five. Mm -hmm. Soldiers were coming back home. And they're away from their wives. And so they started having children left and right. Mm -hmm. And so they realized that, whoa, uh, people are coming to McDonald's barbecue with a whole bunch of, not just not just him and her, but him and her and families mm. started coming out. It wasn't just teenagers, but it was families. Little him and hers. Little him and hers, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's 1940, dude. All this is uh -huh. happening in 19... 40 that aerodrome and then they turned into the barbecue spot and they're in san bernardino california so 1948 mm. something crazy happens you got to understand something remember they left home in new hampshire mm -hmm. they came to hollywood mm -hmm. failed in the theater business mm -hmm. had no money and now they work themselves all the way up to where they're at at mcdonald's barbecue in 1948, something happens now. They decide to take one of the biggest gambles of their life. Now, let me ask you something. If your business is doing good, would you want to stop it? Probably not. However, they went against all odds. And what they did, they decided to close McDonald's barbecue down. Hmm. Who in the right mind would do that? somebody who's not in the right mind <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why mcdonald's is what it is today they closed it down in 1948 and what they did is they did an entire remodel of their kitchen area to now only cook hamburgers and french fries hmm. the entire city thought they were crazy they were the biggest the most famous car hop in town and why change it? 
if it was working just fine. Mm -hmm. Well, look at, remember in 1934, they couldn't even make $100 a month for rent. Mm -hmm. About this time, when they decided to close down McDonald's barbecue, they were bringing in an annual sales, $200,000. That's pretty crazy. That's and they lot. said, we're going to make changes. Huh. <laughs> the brothers noticed something that was preventing them from making more money in less time. Here's what they noticed. Is everybody was taking too much time with the car hops. When they ordered the food, mm -hmm. mm. they were trying to pick up on the girls. Mm. And so if you were in your car and you're ordering food, you're spending 25, 30 minutes talking to the mm. girls and uh, there's no more food being ordered. And they, and they noticed that the car hops were slowing down the speed of service for them. Mm. And so people were staying longer in the same spot without ordering any more food. And so, I mean, I guess the best thing I could do right now is uh, let you hear from uh, Richard McDonald himself. On what he has to say about that. Come on in, Richard. My brother and I would check, sit out on a lot. And first of all, the customer would come in and uh, the car hop would take the tray out and the menu. Then she'd go back to the drive in. Then she'd go back out again. They weren't ready to order. Right? So they'd be back and forth a half a dozen times. And uh, the system just, uh, we, we could see that. Uh, you know, we were kind of getting into an age of jet propulsion, and this was really a hoss and buggy operation. So uh, that sort of put the idea, we knew we had to do something to speed speed things up, yeah. Well, of course, in those days, the self-service bit was starting to come into vogue anyway. So uh, that sort of uh, put the idea into our head, but we wondered how the customers would accept being served in their cars for so many years. See, we we were there from 1940 until 1948 with car hops. And uh, boy, they loved this, this car service, especially when it was rainy and and, and so forth. But we, we decided to take the bull by the horns. And uh, we closed it down. And when people found out what we were gonna do, they thought we had gone insane. And you could, we had a great business. We had the most popular drive-in in town, and uh, people couldn't understand. They said, "My God, the McDonald brothers! I think that they're, <laughs> they're 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 losing their minds." So, but that was it. It was just a case of complaints, and we could see that something had to had had to be done. They wanted the car hops, and they didn't want to have to get out of their cars, and also. Of course, we had eliminated all nice glassware and dishes. Everything was on paper. And they weren't too happy about that. They just weren't happy about any part of it. And uh, made no bones about, uh, about uh, letting us know it, too. Well, it, <clears throat> it took off very slowly, very slowly. The uh, first month, it was, it was pitiful, you know. People would come in, they'd honk their horns, wanted a car hop. At night, they blinked their lights, they wanted a car hops. We had signs all over the place that people don't pay much attention to, uh, to signs. And this went on first month, in the second month, into the third month. It had picked up a little bit, but sometimes, in the old days, we look out on the parking lot, it'd be filled with cars. Now we'd look out there, probably three cars, and maybe two of them were our employees that were parked out there. So uh, it, was, it was tough. Three different times, we almost threw, threw in a towel because uh, we just couldn't get it off the ground. And uh, one day my brother said, you know, Dick, he says, that looks like this was a dumb idea. He said, what do you think? Should we <laughs> call back the car hops? Well, I said, if you want to do it, I'll, I'll go along. But our pride, God, our pride was hurt. See, to think this was going to be really a flop. So we decided, let's, let's try it. Let's hang on a little bit longer. So we did. Well, along about the end of the third month, it began to pick up a little. And we began to get uh, sales clerks, construction workers, cab drivers, and they loved the speed of it. Boy, they could come in bingo. So from then on, the thing just took off. And another big factor, the youngsters loved it. They, for some reason, loved to go up to the windows and put the order in themselves, carry the tray out, 
They, the kids loved it. So of course, when we had the kids, we had mama and papa too. So as word began to spread through salesmen throughout the country, and we began to get a little publicity in the trade magazines, and the first thing we knew, people were converging on us to see what was, what this was all about. This we didn't call it fast food then. We don't. We didn't call it anything. <laughs> they didn't call it anything. Man, you know, their goal, Fern, was to hmm. fill each customer's order in less than, or, or in 30 seconds or less. So when they made this change, their goal was, you know what, we were going to serve people their food mm. in 30 seconds or, or less. As a matter of fact, that's when they came out with this first mascot. This was the mascot <laughs> before it was Ronald McDonald. He was like a pancake. I don't know what in the world he was, but, you know, his name was I'm Speedy. And the purpose like, was that like for that. Speed, on speed right there. <laughs> but, you know, if you actually looked really, really close at the McDonald's signs, you'll see that uh, that Speedy dude mm -hmm. was actually on all of the, uh, hmm. you know, on all of their McDonald's signs. But so, so, so what happened now it's now now we're in 1949 okay mm -hmm. and so after that initial grand after that initial grand opening and they started to get some national exposure and they received hundreds of people started flocking to san bernardino california to that spot right there at that uh the corner of uh what was it 14th and e street mm -hmm. and um you know, they were flocking there. Uh, I'm talking about not just customers, but now people who were interested, other um, food restaurant owners. They wanted to know, how are you getting this food out so fast to these people who are uh, showing up? So remember, they were struggling for $100 for rent, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then when they made this move uh, to close that McDonald's barbecue and now stop the car hops and open up this new place and just call it McDonald's Hamburgers, now this is the now we're mid 1950s. Now they're bringing in an annual revenue of three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So from going to not being able to pay one hundred dollars a rent to now bringing in three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you know, is pretty great success. You know, so Richard and Maurice, the two brothers, they hit the American jackpot, and what happened was now. They couldn't now make enough milkshakes hmm. for all of the customers because back then they were called malts. But so back then you would have to make a malt one malt at a time, one milkshake at a time. Hmm. And so what happened is there was this guy out there who worked for a – he was a salesman for a company that was called the Multi Mixer. Hmm. That guy's name was Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc heard about all this action that was going on at McDonald's. He contacted them. He says, hey, I think I could solve your problem. We have a multi-mixer uh, milkshake machine, and I think it made eight milkshakes at one time. Hmm. So you can imagine the McDonald's brothers jumped on that because their goal was what? To serve people their stuff in less than 30 seconds. And so this is what they did. And uh, this is what attracted the attention of that multi-mixer salesman, Ray Kroc. Hmm. It gets better after this, Fern. It really, really does. All right. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to show you the very first commercial that McDonald's has ever put out. And this is in 1963. Introducing the world's newest, silliest, and hamburger eatingest clown, Ronald McDonald. Now, where is that clown? Oh, Ronald. 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 Hey, Ronald. Here I am, kid. Hey, isn't watching TV fun? Especially when you got delicious McDonald's hamburgers. Ronald, you can't be on TV and watch it at the same time. Now, come on and meet the boys and girls. Oh, we've already met. I know we're going to be friends, too, because I like to do everything boys and girls like to do. Especially when it comes to eating those delicious McDonald's hamburgers. A magic tray here keeps me well supplied. McDonald's hamburgers, french fries, and milkshakes. Watch for me on TV. We'll have lots of fun. Burger happy. 
happy clown, a McDonald's drive-in restaurant is his favorite place in town. <laughs> What do you think about that? That jingle is like uh, like a Christmas. I think that's like a good Christmas jingle. Uh, dun, 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 dun. What is that song? Uh, dun, 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 dun. I don't know, but whatever it okay. is, it's it, it was written properly, right? It was uh. family oriented. But you know what? So that was Ronald McDonald. Oh yeah. Okay. But before he was Ronald McDonald, uh, he had he wasn't Ronald McDonald. Hmm. You know what his name was before? Hmm. His name was Donald McDonald. Ooh, not Trump. <laughs> Donald McDonald, man. Donald in McDonald. The, These guys, what happened? Hot dogs and coffee, Donald McDonald. Dude, 38,000 restaurants later, something worked pretty good. But yeah, Donald McDonald was his name. However, what happened was the kids were afraid of him. <laughs> I, I would too. I'd I'm not like, sure if you noticed, but the hat that he was wearing was literally a um, a, a cup holder. You know what you put your, your sodas in the cup uh -huh. holder, and it was cut out in the middle. And and this is what he used uh, 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 for his hat. But he was too scary for the kids, and uh, you know, so you know, so man, a, a lot a lot has changed uh, since, <laughs> since since then. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. So. Uh, what that that all came from the one restaurant, right? Yeah, the, the McDonald's hamburgers in San Bernardino. So what happened when that second restaurant came, or uh, like how did it get to so many restaurants today? Well, I mentioned earlier, right, that uh, before the commercial break, mm -hmm. the name Ray Kroc. Mm -hmm. Here's where the curve, here's the answer to the curve. Managerial leadership versus visionary leadership. Hmm. That was the difference between the McDonald brothers and Ray Kroc. Hmm. The McDonald brothers were a very managerial. They were hmm. managerial. In other words, um, you know. Okay, if we speed forward to 1953 now, mm -hmm. okay, and remember, Ray Kroc is just a salesman, multi-mixer salesman. Okay. Before that, he was selling paper cups all over the place, okay? That's all he was. But in 1953, uh, you know, when Richard and Maurice realized that that octagon building, you know, that aerodrome or the aerodrome building, yeah. McDonald's type of looking thing, uh -huh. you know, that they couldn't keep up with the demand – you know, of the business, so they decided to demolish that building. They demolished that building, and they built a brand new one with um, Richard's design of the Golden Arches. That's another question, okay? A lot of people think it's an M for McDonald's, but the reality is there are two Golden Arches, and uh, the illusion makes it look like it's an M, but where did those Golden Arches come from? That's a good question. Yeah. You know, it's a good question. Well, you got to remember... Richard and his brother Maurice, which his nis which Maurice's nickname was Mac, mm. where we get the Big Mac mm. hamburger from. They were millionaires about this time. Okay, they're bringing in that much money every year, three hundred and fifty G's a year, and now we're well in you know ten years into this McDonald's thing. They're millionaires, so both of them had mansions. Okay, so Richard was at his house one day, and he had two columns on the side of his mansion. And he's trying to come up with this new design for McDonald's, a new restaurant look. And so he's sketching up some things, and it don't look right with two columns and then a restaurant in the middle. And then he decided, you know what? I wonder how it'll look if I just put a, an arch over those columns. And he did that on a piece of pencil, um, on a paper with pencil, took it to the architect. And that's how you got the golden arches mm. uh, for M McDonald's. And so in 1953... Uh, the brothers' uh, design said that that was going to be the prototype for every other McDonald's thereafter. And so in 1953, they tore down that old McDonald's building and they rebuilt the new building. And that's what the new McDonald's looked like. 
right there. Yeah. You can see the golden arches. That San Bernardino, California, same location where that aerodrome was. Mm. They knocked it down, and those two golden arches got on that building. And today, there's still some around. They're rebuilt, and there's uh, one original one that is still standing. However, if you see a McDonald's that looks like that, that's what's going to be called a McDonald's classic. Hmm. A McDonald's classic. And if you look closely, you see that neon sign? Yeah. The burgers were 15 cents, but look in the middle. Do you still see I'm Speedy? Oh, yeah. There's I'm Speedy right there. That's the, that was the original uh, logo for, for McDonald's. And so, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Uh, they knocked down that old one. They built that new one up hmm. there. And in... Uh, you know, uh, about time 1954 came, mm -hmm. they already had opened up their fourth restaurant. Hmm. And their fourth restaurant was in Downey, California, hmm. which still stands today. That is the oldest and longest standing McDonald's in the world. So if you go to Downey, California, mm -hmm. which is just a few miles from here, you go to that McDonald's, that's the original, that's the oldest McDonald's standing. As a matter of fact, the city tried to shut it down in 1993 when the Northridge earthquakes hit. Mm -hmm. uh, it was no longer safe. The city fought for it to keep it open. They made changes. And to this day in Downey, California, that restaurant right there, you see that? Mm. That same sign, look at that McDonald's logo on the top. See, I'm Speedy is still up there. And then to the right, that was the very um, first uh, McDonald's logo when mm -hmm. it came to what used to be called, I want to say, the McDonald's System Incorporation. McDonald's System Incorporation. And so that McDonald's you're looking at right there is still standing today in Downey, California. If you're in the area, go check it out. They actually have a museum there as well. But... Um, Yes, sir. So this is how we're going to close this out here. You have a big question to ask me, right? Yeah, I do. So uh, Ray Kroc was in the picture. Mm -hmm. And how did Ray Kroc, what was it about him that got the McDonald's success? Remember, Ray Kroc, all he was doing was selling milkshakes, right? Yeah. McDonald's tore down their older restaurant and built that new one up. That we just seen, right? Not the Downey one, but the one in San Bernardino. So Ray Kroc in 1955 decides to go and visit that restaurant for himself in person. Mm -hmm. And when he goes there, he can't believe what he sees. And so he convinces the McDonald's brothers to let him franchise for McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, remember... Uh, uh, Dick and Maurice, that's mm -hmm. what Richard's nickname was. Mm -hmm. You know, Dick and Maurice, they were owning the, I want to say there were 10 McDonald's that they actually owned themselves mm -hmm. before they were franchised. Okay. They owned them themselves. But Ray Kroc shows up, and now he starts to convince the brothers to let him franchise the McDonald's. And so Ray, Ray Kroc actually opens up, he opens up, the first McDonald's in Illinois. Mm -hmm. You like that one, huh, Greg Hill here? He opens up the first McDonald's in uh, in Illinois. I think it's called Des Moines. Is there is that is that a city in Il in Illinois? Is it Des Moines, D S D E S M O I N E E S or something like that. But he opens up uh, the first one, and that was it right there. Mm -hmm. That McDonald's you're looking at. It's a replica, right, of the yeah. one in San Bernardino? Yeah. Because that's what the McDonald brothers prototype. They said every McDonald's is going to have to look like ours. And so Ray Kroc opened up the very first franchise McDonald's. And he opens it up there. And uh, here's where the curve really, really uh, begins to take place here. The, the the bottom line the bottom line is this. I mean, Ray Kroc did an amazing job. I mean, he actually canvassed the whole city. That this is actually the first flyer. This is the original flyer that he used to canvass all over in De Plains. That's what it's called, I think. De Plains, Illinois. April fifteenth, he opened this store up. 
the first franchise McDonald's. And um, to this day, Ray Kroc, well, Ray Kroc passed, but he calls that the very first McDonald's. Hmm. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. But the bottom line is, Fern, the bottom line is, is let's just say this, that the relationship went sour. It went sour after Ray Kroc bought all the restaurants from the brothers. Hmm. And Ray didn't realize that the original McDonald's in San Bernardino, California, was not included when he bought out McDonald's. Hmm. He bought all the restaurants with the exception of the original one. I don't know the details on how come he don't know that or didn't know that. I don't know what happened there. But the McDonald's brothers stood with their original McDonald's. Hmm. And, and so, you know, it got pretty, it got, it got really pretty, pretty heated there. Oh, so there was, uh, was there still 10 or was there more at this time? Do you know? I want to say that his store in Illinois made, I want to say that it was more than 10 at that time, but he was the first franchise. So did like... Uh, did he have to buy every single one individually or did McDonald's just sell him like, okay, for this price, you can take all of them or something? Exactly what happened. For this price, you can have it all. And what was that? Or Well, some say that Dick and Maurice sold McDonald's to Ray Kroc for $2.7 million. But... Um, Let's see what uh, Richard McDonald's has to say about that. Well, you know, we've, we came very close <clears throat> to, uh, to a discontinuing franchise. We, we had sold, I think, uh, oh, about 20 franchises. The first one was to a fellow named Neil Fox, uh, who bought it for Phoenix. And uh, Phil, uh, Fox had a lot of money. He had a chain of, uh, of uh, filling stations around Los Angeles. Well, he came to us with his partner who had a fleet of salmon ships up in Seattle and they wanted to quit the franchising and they would put up all the money and we'd have our own units. Okay? And they wanted to build them up, up and down the Pacific coast first and then keep, keep on going. So uh, we told Neil Fox, Neil, Neil, this is going to take an awful lot of money to get something like that. He says, We've got the money, don't, don't worry about, about the money. But the more we thought about it, and you know, we'd been in business quite a while then, my brother and I, and we knew what was going to happen. We were going to have to run these, see? That was a, a, the stipulation with, uh, with Neil Falk. McDonald's brothers were going to run. Well, that would mean we'd be living in motels, we'd traveling all over the country, we'd have all the grief of the problems, that are, and neither one of us had any kids, we had nobody to bring in, in, in into the business. And uh, we had a big meeting with Neil Fox, and his, uh, fellow, his name was Smith from Seattle. And uh, we said, well, we've decided to go the franchising route. We told him why. We said, well, and this will be a tough program. They'll have to do, get the locations, get the financing, get the buildings up and fight the zoning boards. We, we said, we wish you would have come to us about 20 years ago. Boy, we'd have kissed you, you know. <laughs> so, uh, first, our, our first I idea was, was not for them to use the name McDonald's. We were just going to sell them the building, the design, the equipment layout. They could come to our place in San Bernardino for their training with their managers. And then th that was it, see, flat fee, 2500 bucks. that was it. We, we had to have a franchise agent. We had to have a, 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 a company to supervise these, these things. And uh, so that was how uh, we hired a franchise agent, a fellow named Bill Tansy. And uh, Bill had been a sales manager of one of the big uh, either Arden Farms or Golden State Korean, one of those big outfits. And uh, very uh, typical salesman, just like Ray Kroc, you know, very aggressive. So uh, Bill started with us, and he sold about, I guess, about 20 franchises. And we opened, I think, nine places. But then Bill had a, 
had some bad health problems and he had to with withdraw. We're about to hear Dick McDonald talk about Ray Kroc and hear in his own words how their relationship started as, and how it ended. A film called The Founder was released in 2017 and it was a story about Ray Kroc and the McDonald brothers. Do you think Dick McDonald would have been happy about this movie and why do you think so if you do? Yes, I absolutely believe that Dick McDonald would have been happy with the movie The Founder. I was thinking those thoughts as, as I was watching the movie. I was thinking about my interview with Dick McDonald and the things he was trying to convey to me. Uh, on the big screen, you see Ray Kroc in all his naked ambition and how he, you know, finessed the operation away from the McDonald brothers. It's, it's up there on the big screen. In the meantime, Ray Kroc had come out to see us because we had been selling so many of his milkshake machines. He was selling uh, uh, milkshake machines. So uh, that was good. He said, you're gonna use the milk my milkshake machines in, in a McDonald's, we should, we intend it was a good product. So he went back to Chicago. About a week later, he called and he said, say, I understand that you've uh, lost your franchise agent. And I said, we, he, we sure have. He said, how about me? So uh, his, the Miller mix of business was going downhill because the drugstores were taking out the soda fountains. They would raise big uh, customers like the drugstores, you know. Uh, and uh, so he could see that his business was, was going to be, uh, we're going downhill. So that's how we said, well, come on out. We'll have a session with our attorney and see what we come up with. and. Uh, Make a long story short, that's what we did. Hyde went to work, uh, Ray went to work as a franchise agent. The first time we talked to him, we could tell that he was very, very aggressive, very aggressive. And uh, which you have to be to be a salesman. And uh, he, was a, he was a typical and had a nice personality and a, and a terrific worker. We were very pleased to, uh, to have Ray Come, uh, come uh, with us. He went to work for us as a franchise agent in 1955 and worked for us till 1961. Now, during that entire period, there was never any mention of him being a founder of McDonald's. He was a franchise agent. But when we sold out to him, boy, we were shocked. We started reading the media, Ray Kroc, founder of McDonald's. And, uh, so we weren't too, we weren't too, uh, too happy about that. We, we had a very strict contract with both Tansy and uh, we had the same contract with the Croc. They could not change a single item. They could not change the price. They could not add an item. They, they couldn't make a single change of any kind without the written approval of the McDonald brothers. And uh, that led to a little friction later on because Ray thought we were holding him down too much, but that was, uh, that was it. They had to get, get permission from McDonald Brothers to uh, any, any changes. Well, the deal was, as I recall it now, and we're going back now quite a few years, he was going to charge $1,900 for a franchise and 1.9% of their gross sales. McDonald Brothers were to get a half of 1% of, of the gross sales. And then uh, uh, he was running having too many many expenses, so we upped the down payment and so forth. But that was the initial payment. It was nineteen hundred dollars, plus uh, one point nine percent of their gross sales. There was a little friction began to build up because Ray thought we had too much control on him. See, Ray was a great idea man, and he'd have one probably every fifteen minutes. But, but some, of them, some of them were not gems. So they began to have a little friction back and forth there because he felt that, that uh, he was not given enough freedom on, on a thing. So one thing kind of led to another. One day my brother said, you know, poor Ray's, he's worried. He says, uh, let's tell him if he wants to give us $3 million. Uh, that's how we, if he give us $3 million in cash, he can forget the McDonald brothers. He really, yeah, he, he, uh, next time we, we talked to him, we said, Ray, you know, you've been 
talking about wanting to buy us out. I said, this is the deal. We want three million bucks. And uh, so we said, there's going to be a lot of taxes on this thing. So that was that was the whole thing. I think the finally, uh, after we paid all the taxes, uh, federal, in California had a stiff tax. Uh, I remember that my brother and I, we each had a million bucks in cash. Ray wanted to find us because he didn't have the, about three, going to take about three million dollars in cash. So we said, no, Ray, it has to be a cash deal. So he was mad. He says, "Got McDonald brothers, get millionaires now." He says, "They, they don't need, they don't need this this money." So uh, he said, uh, "But we we said, Ray, if, if we don't get the cash, we might as well go along with the with the royalty deal." And uh, so he finally got it. And it's interesting. He got it from there were four colleges. There were Princeton University. There was a women's college, Swarthmore. There was the Negro College, uh, Howard University. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, the Ford Foundation came in on that uh, deal, came up with the... Uh... But Ray said later on, he said, uh, it actually cost me $18 million to buy out the McDonald brothers. He said, by the time I got through paying all the interest to these colleges for their loans, he says, I, it actually cost me 18 million bucks. Wow. $18 million. Mm. So people say $2.7 million is what Ray Kroc bought out McDonald's for. Uh, the McDonald brothers say it was $3 million. However, it costed Ray Kroc $18 million mm. after financing and all of this stuff. Wow, but eighteen million dollars is still nothing. All these years later, for uh, McDonald's, you know. As a matter of fact, is it well, still owned by? Is it still owned by the the Crocs? Well, Ray Croc died. Yeah. Ray Croc later on went to become uh, the owner of the San Diego uh, Padres as well. Mm, I didn't know that. And uh, he died. And uh, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, to this date. Uh, Ray Kroc goes down in history as giving the largest donation ever in United States of America hmm. to a nonprofit organization. Hmm. And that was to uh, actually his wife. When Ray Kroc died, his wife uh, or his wife donated, uh, his wife donated, um, I forget how many billions of dollars to the Salvation Army. Dang. Yeah. And so... But, you know, $18 million really is what it costed Ray Kroc. And so, uh, you know, actually, you know, the la the uh, CEO for McDonald's, uh, he actually was fired in 2017. Hmm. He was fired in 2017. You know what his compensation was for working uh, at McDonald's? Hmm. $21,761,052. That's what that CEO got paid for working uh for mcdonald's uh no that was his compensation i forget how many years as a ceo but he got over a million dollars a year uh That's being great. in the position as ceo wow. and so when he got fired they gave him a seven hundred and two thousand dollar uh severance plan package hmm. for being fired <laughs> so when ray Kroc. And this is how we close, because this is going to be the finale answer on how McDonald's grew from one restaurant to uh, over 38,000. You know, I may be wrong. I'm, I'm going to correct that. I want to say it's 36,000. Okay. That's still a lot, though. Yeah. Okay. Um, when Ray Kroc found out the, um, that the original, story, the original store was not in the deal, you know, he got so furious. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, if, you, if you heard Richard McDonald... You don't hear any type of uh, animosity or bitterness or hatred, right? Yeah. But if you would hear Ray Kroc's interview, mm. Ray Kroc disliked McDonald's, uh, the brothers, mm -hmm. period, all over because he never knew that the original McDonald's was included in that plan, in that plan mm. of buying, buying out the McDonald's brothers. And you know what? You know what he did? Mm. What Ray Kroc did? Ray Kroc said, well, I own the name to mcdonald's now he goes so you 
are going to have to change the name of your McDonald's. He goes, you're going to change the name to McDonald's and I'm going to build my own McDonald's right across the street from yours. <laughs> so you know what Dick and Maurice McDonald had to do? They changed their name and that was the McDonald's now. It used to be called the Big M Hamburgers. And, and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to San Bernardino, California today on the corner of 14th and E Street, uh -huh. you'll still see the sign there, partial, partial of that sign. Uh, however, that M is not going to be there, but you'll see that big old block there and you'll see the two columns. Go by there because it's an unofficial museum. Mm hmm you know why it's an unofficial museum? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's unofficial. You know why? why? It's because the McDonald's in, in Illinois that Ray Kroc says is the number one McDonald's, that's the official museum. And so this guy's laughing at me because, um, <laughs> because uh, what? You don't take history serious or what? No, it's not that at all. No. <laughs> No, Dude, why are you my, laughing? With my back hurts. Tell me why you're That's laughing. All it is. My back hurts. That's it. I'm in pain right now, dude. It's um. Anyway, <laughs> so. Dude, I'm telling you, this is for people. No, I'm not the, saying it's the, bad. The, I'm just is... saying it's, it's, it's cool. It's just I, I'm going to get different chairs next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the big answer, dude. Right. Okay, so how did they go from one to 36,000 restaurants? Gregory Hilliard. Huh? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I know. Okay, and I'm getting tired and my back is hurting too. <laughs> In 1999, I read a book that changed my life. It was called The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Chapter 1 was a chapter that was called The Law of the Lid. And this was the first time I ever heard about the McDonald Brothers and Ray Kroc. McDonald Brothers, their lid level was as low as a ceiling. Ray Kroc, as you heard Richard McDonald say himself, he was very aggressive. So here is the answer. How did they go from, okay, McDonald's had nine restaurants, the brothers. Ray Kroc is the one who got it all the way past 36,000. One word, aggressiveness. Hard work, another word. Passion, another word. The capacity level that you have to enlarge that nobody else will enlarge for you. You can't wait for a change agent to come around you. You have to be your own change agent if you are going to be able to go past the ceiling and past the sky. When you have McDonald's in Lebanon, when you have McDonald's in 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 the Bible soil countries you are not just a managerial leader you are a leader of leaders visionary leadership is the answer on how you grow from one to thirty eight thousand and so you know what ray Kroc said fern you do know because the answer is in front of you on our notes on I could the look, table. Yeah. But but let's just act like you don't know what he said. I haven't looked at okay, it. Okay, okay. <sighs> Years ago, I saw an A&E documentary. <laughs> <laughs> this is why he's laughing because I take too long. <laughs> Can I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Years ago, I saw an A&E uh, documentary. And by the way, this is my son who I'm super proud of who was making fun of me in his own way on the inside. Um... I'll uh, bring up his name, Fernie Franco Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we forgot to tell him what the winners win, right? Who, if the person who shared first, what did they win? <laughs> you don't win a McDonald's gift card. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Uh. <laughs> Ooh, and I promise you, we didn't get it donated, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. This is going to offend some Christians, what I'm about to say, and we're going off the air in three minutes, okay? Ray Kroc said this. Hmm. Would you like coffee with that? He said this. He says, my vision, my vision is to have more golden arches than there are crosses on the steeples of churches mm. in the United States of America. I don't like them anymore. 
<laughs> that was his vision. He says, I'm going to have more golden arches. And he was a smart man. Mm -hmm. Where did he put McDonald's? You know where he put McDonald's? Hmm. He put McDonald's across the street from every church. You know why? Because he knew when people left church, they mm -hmm. wanted something fast to eat. Mm. As a matter of fact, that's how the filet fish came around because <laughs> of Catholic churches. Right now we're Lent, right? Mm -hmm. filet fish came out during this time of the year years ago because Ray Kroc thought outside of the box. And so, anyways, you guys, it's been nice uh, spending time with you guys. Um, and uh, this will be available on demand for those of you guys who are just tuning in. I am fascinated by the different kind of looking McDonald's that That's you'll find. That's a McDonald's. No. Where at? I don't know. Uh, I should have took That's longer like, to research it. That's not a McDonald's. Yep. That, that, these are McDonald's as are well. Those are McDonald's. Yep. These are fascinating looking McDonald's. This is one of my favorites. A Happy Meal shaped McDonald's. Hmm. One of my favorites. This is actually um, another view of it. Look at how awesome that looks. Any kid would want to go there. That's where you find them. I, I want to find them Megan Law folks right there. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I want to say kidding. that uh, this McDonald's here is um, uh, in Las Vegas. That looks like one of the casinos in the background. I like this one. Look at that. Uh, that's is that a awesome. Slide? It is a slide. That's a slide. No, that's a stairway. Oh. That's a stairway. Look at that one. That one's pretty cool. Bag of French fries there. Hmm. Amazing. Now, you and I take McDonald's for granted. Okay. Soviet Soviet Union, uh -huh. when they opened the first McDonald's, that's what that looked like. That's how many people wanted to try McDonald's for the first time. Okay, time is up. Mm -hmm. Timeline, 1940, McDonald's logos. Look at all those logos all the way. And down there on the bottom right is the latest and longest standing McDonald's logo that you'll find today. Ladies and gentlemen... It's been our honor to be with you today. Mm. I hope that this was interesting to you. Uh, if it wasn't, I'm sorry. But to me, man, I couldn't wait to do this. I've always been fascinated by uh, McDonald's and how they've grown, and they're just so amazing. Anyways, uh, check us out on all these different handles here. You can also go on Twitter and just stay up to date with quotes that I put up there once a week. Just want to let you guys know it's been an honor being here with you guys today. And I hope you enjoyed this. This is how we're ending this. Enjoy this crazy, crazy commercial from the 1970s. Get yourself ready for a trip through McDonald's land. Ronald's hand. Follow Ronald McDonald through the land of apple pie trees. And don't be surprised if you meet Big Mac and Big Cheese. There's thick shake volcanoes. You'll even find a French fry thatch. Now just turn around and see if you won't find a hamburger patch as you're heading for a McDonald's in McDonald's land, a McDonald's in McDonald's land, a McDonald's. Ronald's gonna take you on a trip through McDonald's land. French fry thatch. Now just turn around and see if you won't find a hamburger patch as you're heading for.